All right, guys. So now with the aging population, all of us are wondering, will I have dementia? Will I have Alzheimer's? Will my father, will my loved one have dementia? Apparently, he or she is experiencing some memory loss, maybe some other types of cognitive impairment. So in the last several years, there has been a huge improvement in our ability to diagnose, precisely diagnose, uh, the presence or absence of dementia and even have a high likelihood of being able to predict whether someone will have Alzheimer's or not. In the next several minutes, I'll show you a sample patient who has undergone some advanced imaging, including MRI imaging with some additional techniques and quantitative EEG analysis, together with the clinical exam, bedside standardized bedside testing, and some very exciting new blood biomarkers that can really help identify whether someone is headed in the wrong direction, whether someone is going to or at high risk for developing Alzheimer's. Colored in aqua green represent a hippocampus and you can see that on the right side there is a larger volume than on the left side. But overall there is a large area of fluid that's replaced what normally would be the hippocampal volume. A patient who scores a 19 on a bedside standardized cognitive test called the Montreal Cognitive Assessment, or MOCA, and he clearly has deficits with visual, spatial, and executive function. He's unable to follow this pattern here, uh, and he's unable to draw the hands of the clock correctly. He's not able to name these animals uh, uh, completely, and f uh, of most significance is the zero out of five delayed recall. Of, um, so while 26 represents the average normal, he scores well below that. We look at quantitative EEG analysis or Loretta imaging, which compares this person's, the same patient's electroencephalography to normal healthy individuals age and gender matched, we see an increase in the slow wave delta, which is between one to three hertz, in area called the precuneus, which is heavily involved in visual spatial skills, attention, uh, and in fact is a key structure for memory. Um, in the same manner, he scores an elevation in six hertz activity, which is also within uh, a theta range of slow wave activity in the left parietal cortex, or uh, Robin area 40. And as further evidence, nowadays with the technology available on serum amyloid testing, we can actually detect the ratio of beta amyloid 4240, which has been linked to a higher risk in terms of developing dementia. And in this very patient, there is, in fact, signs of a high risk with a 42-40 ratio of 0.118, and high risk is considered anything less than 0.150. Of course, there are other serum tests now available, including phosphorylated tau levels, which was not. So that was a very brief glimpse of what is now available in terms of advances in diagnostic workup of patients who are suffering from cognitive impairment and memory loss. So no longer are physicians and specialists making educated guesses. They're using uh, biomarkers, advances in imaging, and of course, more precise clinical evaluation to make a diagnosis. And what's more important is that now we can diagnose patients and intervene earlier, much earlier than before, and reduce the progression of the disease over time. And now we can even actually help patients improve their symptoms, not just slow down the decline. I welcome you to gain more understanding of the new advances in the treatment of cognitive impairment and dementia, some of which are available here and many other offices around the world. Thank you. I'm most pleased to be here and most pleased uh, from the bottom of my heart in terms of what you've done for my wife. It's immediate, it's marked, and sustainable. 
This has been a life-changing situation, not only for my wife, but also for myself. Mm -hmm.